Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the exec and members of the executive committee, um, at the budget committee, uh, there was a, a very vigorous investigation of some of the consequences of what's in front of you. Um, uh, perhaps reluctantly, but nevertheless, the city manager did say that if we wanted to maintain service levels, we would have to increase property taxes beyond the rate of inflation. That fact is out there. The uh, I'm, I'm sorry I forget Mr. Roto's title from the TTC. Uh, he was asked if we had to find $140 million from the TTC budget, and currently you're going to be asking them for 180. So I asked 140 because I assumed you would find the same savings that you found last year. I asked him what would that, what would that look like if we did it as a fare increase. That's about a 35, 40 cent fare increase. That's what $140 million cost. I said, so suppose we don't have to do that as a fare increase. Let's suppose that we did that by reducing bus service. How much do you save for each bus that you cut during peak? And if you take the amount of money that it takes to operate it and you subtract the fare revenue that you're foregoing when you don't run that bus, each time you cut a bus, you save about $150,000. So that would mean cutting about 900 buses in the peak out of a fleet of 1,600. So most of the bus service in the City of Toronto. That's what a $140 million cut to the TTC looks like. Yesterday, when we were having the uh, deputations on the Toronto Community, the re re reorganization of Toronto Community Housing, we directly asked the CEO, can you be a landlord of excellence and meet the directions that are enumerated here in the, in the report you're about to vote on? His answer was unequivocal, it was clear, it was simply no. So just on those two pieces, letting alone what the impact will be on our child care services, our recreation services, and all the other services that you are asking for a cut, just on those two pieces, if you pass this budget direction, you are telling city staff or it's staff in those two agencies, rather, to go and do the impossible. The TCHC simply cannot find efficiencies the way other departments do. What are they going to do? Not provide heat? Turn off the lights? Lock up buildings? There simply isn't a way for them to save that money. And the transit cuts are untenable. So the choice you have is whether you adhere to uh, an impossible promise to keep the property tax below the rate of inflation, or you tell those two agencies to fundamentally undermine the services that we deliver for the City of Toronto. Government rests on legitimacy. It rests on our ability to tell the public that we honestly and legitimately represent the things they want to do. There isn't a meaningful number of Torontonians who would support huge cuts or huge fare increases at the TTC and continuing to be a terrible, terrible, terrible landlord. I'll have to uh, ask you to conclude on that note. In there yesterday with us, and I'm sure he's just stepped out for a minute, but I'm sorry that Councillor Perks isn't here because I want to sort of direct some of my comments to some of his. I, I just can't say how much I concur in the comments of Councillor Shiner and Councillor Deputy Mayor and Wong and others that that you have to make a really sincere effort um, to look at the expenditures that you're already incurring as a first step to deciding what you're going to do going forward. Uh, if I had come forward any time during my business career and said, especially as a CEO, and said, we've found everything we can possibly find in a great big, huge, multi-billion dollar organization. There's nothing left to be done better, no, nothing that could be changed that could allow us to, to do more with the same money. Um, I probably would have, been, would have been nicely suggested I should move on to some other occupation. It is the job of leadership to be looking in any organization, and especially, I would argue, when you're dealing with public monies, at better ways to do things. And so when Councillor Perk says there's going to be some recommendation forthcoming as a result of all this to cut all the bus service in Toronto, first of all, who in his right mind would ask them to do such a thing? Secondly, who in their right mind would bring forward such a recommendation? And thirdly, who in their right mind would approve it? 
And this is the mistake we make, and, and I think the disservice we do to the people we serve when we make those false choices uh, be the choice that we put in front of people. It's either, uh, you know, meet this target and do away with all bus service or just leave things as they are, as if that's the choice. It's not the choice. He knows that. We know that. And guess who else knows that in spades? The public know that. Same with Toronto Community Housing. Councillor Perks used the example of turning off the heat in the buildings. Who in their right mind would ask for that recommendation? Who in their right mind would make it? And who in their right mind would approve it? And the answer is nobody. But the notion that we should give up in advance and just sort of say there's nothing to be found here, there's no alternative but to, uh, to, uh, uh, to raise property taxes, or any other tax for that matter, first, I don't accept, and I think that this uh, report prepared by the staff, and which I uh, sense we're now going to concur in, at least in terms of a direction to take, is the right thing to do. And I will then simply make mention of the example that one or two others, including Councillor Crawford, have already mentioned. For years we heard the police service, years before I was here, say nothing can be done. It just is the way it is. It's 90% wages. It's this and it's that. And why did that happen? I think it's because they didn't turn their minds to different ways of doing things. Restructuring the divisions and or using technology and or using non-police, uh, you know, highly trained personnel to do certain things that the police were doing and or letting the citizens file certain kinds of information with the police service online so a police officer doesn't have to go out. And the net result of that was a report that wasn't all about budget reductions at all. It was about transforming policing, but it will have the effect because they've expressed a willingness to do things differently of, of also uh, allowing that budget to be uh, better contained than ever. And so I would say that's a, a, a prime example, as, as has been cited, of when you put your mind in a determined way with smart people, and we have lots of smart people in our public service here that can help us explore new ways to do things, that we can go some considerable distance to uh, what is being asked for here. Um, and uh, I just think the notion that we set up these other kinds of false choices is very misleading and not consistent with the duty we've been given uh, by the public to look at that first long before we start looking at the revenue matters. So, uh, well, it's better than the sirens yesterday, Deputy Mayor. Uh, so on that uh, note, I'll be, of course, uh, supporting the recommendation. Um, any other speakers? All right. Well, then I think we're ready to uh, call the question. I think actually the, uh, the budget chair did move it. And so he's moved the recommendation, and it's in front of you on the screen. And I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? That carried unanimously. Thank you.